Spot and stock hunting for turkeys, or run and gun for those of you who want to sound cooler, is an exciting way to turkey hunt. It is an aggressive style of hunting, so for those of you who want a little more action or are just impatient like I am, you can make something happen instead of waiting for that lazy old Tom to work its way to you. This involves a certain bit of skill and a large part of luck. And while I can't really do anything about your luck, what I can do is give you some tips to help you close that skills gap so you can take advantage of the hunts that do go your way. So in this video, we're gonna go over four run and gun turkey hunting tips. And the first tip to run and gun turkey hunting is you have to have even the slightest bit of awareness. You need unagi. And I hope at least some of you are friends fans, otherwise you're not gonna get that unagi reference and I just look dumb. You have to be aware of your surroundings. You have to understand how windy it is, what type of terrain you're walking, what what's on the ground that you have to avoid from making a lot of noise. These are kind of things that you really need to start getting good at paying attention to because it'll help you not just in turkey hunting but if you, if you want to deer hunt and, and just getting to and from your stand as quietly as possible. And it's not only about you know your external awareness but also a bit of self-awareness. How you're interacting with your environment. Are you dragging your feet, making a whole bunch of noise. Are you talking too loud? Are you walking with your head down so you can't see anything? These are the kind of things you need to, you need to really be in the present when you're walking. And I've talked about this a couple times in, in different videos. And I've caught myself a few times that if I'm not paying attention, I'm just, you know, just taking a nice stroll out of the woods or, or while I'm walking around, not really paying attention to what's going on around me. And you really have to check yourself to really take advantage of this type of hunting. And another thing that I've noticed that happens if you're not really paying attention is you always, you tend to end up walking too fast for a spot and stalk or a run and gun type of hunt. So you really need to make sure you slow down and, and take your time. Otherwise you're gonna end up just pushing turkeys around and you're gonna have one horrible turkey season. Always be scanning for turkeys and Choose your steps carefully. That way you can pick the quietest and safest route. And always be on the lookout for a potential spot to set up in case you sneak up on a tom, or more than likely, a tom sneaks up on you. And the second tip is to use your surroundings to your advantage. It is awfully hard to sneak up on a tom when you're walking through an open field. If you spot a turkey in the distance, plan your route carefully so you can move through cover. This might be something like a dry creek bed or a line of cedars or even a slope off of that field that gets you below that turkey's field of view. This really goes hand in hand with having good awareness of your surroundings. Know how you're going to get where you want to go. The most direct path is very rarely the best one. And the third tip is to use the walk and call. Some people call this trolling for turkeys, but it means the same thing. What you do is you slowly walk through the woods and call about every 100 yards or so, hoping for a gobble. And if you get a gobble, you set up in an area that would be good for you and try to get that tom to come in. If you don't hear a gobble, you just keep on walking. But before you make that call, you need to try to pick out a spot that would be good for you to get to if you do get that gobble. Don't wait until you hear that return gobble and then try to scramble to find a good spot because you typically can't find a really good one if you're not prepared. And just because you don't hear a gobble, that doesn't really mean that there's no turkeys in the area. You need to give a call and then just wait a little while. Don't just call 30 seconds later, oh, nothing, and then keep on walking. There's a lot of times that toms will come in silently. Use that awareness that I've talked about a couple of times to make sure there really isn't anything around. If you give a call, that tom could be working in silently, so you really need to be watching for movement. Now, as far as what type of call to use when you're doing this walk-in call, you can really use any of the three, you know, your mouth, your slate, or your box call. But a box and a slate call are going to give you a little more volume. And if you can pick spots to, to call maybe at the top of a draw, that will allow your sound to really reach out farther. And the fourth run-and-gun turkey hunting tip is to use a fan. Oh, that was a little dusty. I don't know if this is just the latest craze or if I'm just hearing about it more, but this is a very exciting, aggressive way to turkey hunt. It allows you to get very up close and personal to a pretty angry tom. If you haven't seen this type of hunting, basically what you do is you take you take a fan. Um, it can be you know a commercially made one, or it can be a fan from you know a previous 
kill. And uh, this is one from last year, and it's probably why it's dusty because I don't I don't typically do fanning. But you take this and you sneak up on a tom, keeping the fan up high enough where you look like a tom coming at him. And if you do this to an older tom, maybe a bit more of a territorial tom, that was hard to say. Uh, anyway, if you do this, it royally pisses them off, and they will usually come right up to you. I'm sure it is probably pretty easy to look up YouTube videos of a turkey hunter doing this, and they get that tom to within like three yards, two or three yards, very, very close. Now, there's a risk of getting spurred, so, I mean, if, I don't know, if the risk of injury excites you, by all means, go for it. I actually saw a video where a guy did this and used a revolver. I think it was a 44 mag, which is a lot, um, and, and shot the turkey in the head when it was two yards away. So it can be a very fun way to turkey hunt, but it is a very high risk, high reward type of hunt. Now, if you decide to do this, try to take it pretty slow and make sure you're holding that fan at about the appropriate height. You don't want that fan too high so it looks like a floating turkey across the field, but you don't want it too low to where it looks like it's just it's dragging its butt along. And if you can, if you can try to approach the tom from downhill that way the fan hides your body a little bit more that would be perfect but of course it, it doesn't always work that way and a lot of times it doesn't even matter it, it makes that tom so mad that it just comes charging in all it sees is that fan and just a word of caution other than the risk of getting spurred by that tom you're trying to kill there is a risk that other hunters might think you really are a turkey uh, I would highly recommend that you do not do this on public land. It, it doesn't matter if you're pretty sure you're the only turkey hunter in the area. Just don't do it. No turkey is worth getting shot over. So that was four run and gun turkey hunting tips. If you have any more tips, leave those down in the comments below. Hit that like button if you like this video. Share it if you found it helpful. And make sure that you are subscribed so you can stay informed.